Is it true there's a bowl of Vicodins in the weight room by the door? No. There used to be. There is a they, they cracked down on that. Oh, that's a good... I might <laughs> come have to come by. over. <laughs> <laughs> we have them here in a little bowl. I, I, there, <laughs> we can't get it to you. <laughs> Okay, guys, we're already laughing. It's Spade and uh, Carby, and we're starting Superfly. Yeah, Here we we're go. always in a good mood always. on Superfly. Always mm-hmm. chuckling away. Look at me. I got a green background. My hair is really like too... It's like a helmet. Well, it actually looks kind of movie, movie star ready, I would say. Oh, you well. know, you could play kind of a badass with that hair, like, you know, with a gun and stuff. Like oh, actually, working on a new impression. I'm going to do it for you at the end. Okay. Hmm. So what? Uh, now, usually we haven't seen each other in a few days. So what? What's been going on with you? What's your? You uh, always my have weekend. Some uh, weird thing happened. I'm still <laughs> doing my tour. I so I was in Spokane mm-hmm. this weekend. Beautiful crowd. Yeah. Uh, I stayed at the hotel right next to it, and so mm-hmm. every single person in that hotel was at the show. I'm walking around. <laughs> oh my god, your show is unbelievable. Blah oh. blah blah blah. Yeah genius blah blah best show in my life. <laughs> better than anyone blah, else blah blah, blah, yeah, blah. Not no burn no no you're the best. blah blah <laughs> everyone else is horrible blah blah <laughs> so whatever i don't even remember uh and, but i remember that part yeah. uh so anyway someone goes you news from spokane big star sydney sweeney i go oh yeah she's a big star oh she's from here she isn't really shocking everyone's from somewhere and you know that girl she's on euphoria okay she's yeah. a big deal she's in um yeah in two movies out right now so i said oh great yeah. and then uh and then bobby's downstairs with some guys and they're like your opener we were we, yeah my opener bobby mimota and they said oh uh we love soccer you talk about it in your act by the way his sister's a big star here and he goes oh <laughs> and then he kept saying it so he finally goes who sydney sweeney how do you like them apples and he's like she is a big star so I go to the airport and I go to the driver. <laughs> literally hey, said, hey. how do you like them apples? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and that's a good way to, you know, okay. let that's- him know like I wasn't bullshitting. Okay. And I say to the driver, uh, I heard his bullshit about Sydney Sweeney. He goes, oh yeah, I did a play with her. I'm like, by the way, I'm Jeez. sure the, the play uh, business is big up in, you know, Spokane, <laughs> Washington. Spokane outskirts. Yeah. So I said, oh, great. So I get on my flight and the, uh, and the, the lady from United it's like, you know, blah, blah. I heard the show is great. Blah, blah, whatever. And then she goes, oh, you know who's on your flight? Sydney Sweeney. I go, I, I can't hear more about this girl. So I get on <laughs> and lo and behold, how about them apples? She's sitting right behind me. Uh, Wait a minute. Sydney Sweeney is in Spokane after all this and she's sitting behind you. Yeah, there she is. See that? It's gorgeous. So um, she's sitting behind me with like her boyfriend or, or something. And, yeah. uh, Actually, she she was in her, in coach, but her boobs were in first. Anyway, can you say that? Uh oh, <laughs> canceled. I mean, I mean, I have to throw in one boob joke. Uh, her. Oh, she's very lovely. I mean, she's displaying them. If we don't notice them, that would be kind of odd. I mean, you know. Yeah, I think they were uh, <laughs> buried in the hoodie in this uh, trip, but uh, she had her hat down. So the, mm-hmm. the stupid story is, uh, my I lose. I don't say anything to her. I don't know what to say. You know, what's there to say? Hey, are we both in showbiz? Fine. Big fan. Big fan. I could have said that. Yeah. That's a, that's a good one. Everyone likes that. That's fine. Mm-hmm. Uh, but it was just awkward. I didn't know what to say. So I lose my five hour energy, you know, the one of the little oh, things. Yeah. And it's a big panic for me. So I'm on the ground looking. And so I crawl around and I go, Hey, you guys see five <laughs> energy around these parts? And then uh, she's You're like, on no. all fours crawling yeah, down the aisle before, before takeoff. Yeah. No, during okay. the flight. During the flight, you're on all four. Okay. Yeah. And everyone's like, quit looking for attention. And I was, but I was looking really for this. Right. And then she goes, no. And then she goes, did you do a show here? And I go, yeah. And everyone's like, you just love your Cindy Sweeney. <laughs> and she goes, oh, I know. And I go, I actually met your brother. Uh, I guess, does he live here? And she goes, well, he's in the army. And I go, is he not here? And she goes, no. And I'm like, well, womp, some, guy, womp. some guy, that's his claim to fame is he's lying about that. The funniest <laughs> thing to lie about. Did so, the whole plane break out into Sydney? Sweeney. Sweeney. No, no, but she's from Spokane, Washington. I was thought from she was Spokane. British. I thought we, we about, land. No, no, she's a. She's a British. All American. 
All right. And then we land, and I've got the whole plane involved now because some lady in the back goes, found it. Found my fucking stupid five hour, hands it down. Mm-hmm. Past Sydney, oh, I get it. <laughs> this everyone's is everyone's touching it. Everyone's touching, <laughs> smothered in COVID and Omicron. And I shake it. I go, it's a little light. I guess you took a few gulps. <laughs> that, that's your reward. <laughs> Fucking crickets. Then, what, what no, a flight! No, no one laughs. And then I, I, I we're about to leave. And uh, anyway, the, the point of this whole story, which is absolutely none, <laughs> is that okay. We're both on dog shit Delta, you know, whatever. Fine. We're on some what? puddle jumper. But the, the point of the story is she is hosting SNL this week. I didn't know that. And she didn't say it. Huh. And, and I have yeah. a feeling she didn't either want to brag or does not know I was on SNL, which is very likely. Hmm. She's well, like she's maybe 24. Yeah. She's probably 20. Yeah. Four. We'll look it up. But it doesn't matter. Mm-hmm. Uh, and... Uh, in those situations, I don't really introduce myself. Sometimes I say, Hey, I'm David. But when you meet other people, do you say your name, Dana? Go. Uh, no, no. Cause I'm, I'm, a, I've always been at the, like, if I walked around dressed as Garth, I get a lot more attention. <laughs> you don't? I can change my, like, what? Look at my face right now. And then, and then, and then assume I have sunglasses on. Like, who's this? Right. You can't tell. I can hide myself in plain sight, but I'll get people sometimes on a flight. And they'll be, are you, uh, are you, uh, who I think you are? Are you that, are you that guy? Or are you, uh, I go, what Jesus? They go, no, no. <laughs> are you, uh, <laughs> you know? are you the main guy? Jesus. But I, I don't judge. I once, if they take me and it's like, Hey, uh, you know, it's a seven hour flight elbow to elbow. Hey, yeah. uh, how do you guys, uh, come up with those? The sketches you do on that on that Saturday Night Live there show, you know. So I I I give into it. We have drinks, we talk, and we go over the history of SNL. And then I said I left forty nine years ago. <laughs> <They're> like, well, <laughs> that, they ask the if guy, you're still on. The guy says, "Well, that's not so fun." The funniest one I had was first class on Virgin America years ago. Big club seats, giant seats. But Paul Bunyan sat next to me. I'm not saying anybody fat. I'm saying a triple sized <laughs> man with shorts calves this big he took the whole thing <laughs> they came around for ordering mm-hmm. and he said oh, well, oh i want of each so he, he got every entree i'll what have them all mean? i'll have them all right. so he had the sandwich to the lasagna the thing so if you get stuck next to paul bunyan just go with it you go and he goes you're gonna eat that cookie you eat that cookie you're uh-huh. gonna eat My- that cookie <laughs> hey, sling like- blade <laughs> sling like- blade some folks call it a sling blade. Mm-hmm. How much you want for them? <laughs> you know, I really I was, I'll take the taters. I'll always, take. Do Billy, I'll always do Billy Bob Thornton if I'm asked. I was pushing you to do sling blade. Uh, by the way, Dana, talk about tough guy. I know I'm not that tough. And on TV, I come off like a hard ass tough guy athlete. <laughs> Definitely. But in real life, we're not showing enough of my sweater. It looks like it's from the fucking Gap. But wow. uh, it's not. Uh, the Happy yeah. Days called and wants their wardrobe back. That's the <laughs> show from 1978. <laughs> yeah, sorry. So Old reference on, lost on younger viewers. Okay, I'm driving my 95 Land Cruiser, which I don't want to say how old I am, but I bought it new. I bought it new. I wasn't old, but I bought it new. So 95 had this whole time. I'm driving mm. down the street the other night when it's starting to rain. It conks out on me at a light on sunset. Now there's two lanes. So I'm in the left lane, which is the faster lane, okay. you know, conks out. Hen, 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 hen. I can't get it going. I'm like, now it's raining. <laughs> I, mm-hmm. I get out of the car. I look around and I go back to my, uh, crummy days. when I was like a bus boy and I have old cars, you know, from 16 years oh, yeah. old, like 25. Junkers. And I always had, had to push start them or jump them or so this would happen a lot. So I open the door and I, and I, and I, and cars like skidding and now it's raining and I don't want to get hit. I can't leave it with the hazards no. uh, in the middle of the lane. Uh, so I start rocking it. I put it neutral and I start yanking. You know, you don't have power steering in this situation. So I yank it. So Land Cruiser, you're trying to push? <laughs> yes. Yeah. With my pin okay. arms, stick legs. I do have Carrie Underwood calves. We know that. But I'm you pushing. You come from the calves. And yeah. I start to go, I got a green light. I'm going to go and try to take an illegal left because it was slightly more downhill to go to the left than the right, but slightly like this, barely. 
And I go, there's no way I can push it up, even if it's one inch. So I rock it and it moves and I start to push it like a fucking monster. I'm pushing it. No one gives a fat fuck. They're all just like <laughs> beeping and get out of the way. And I'm like, no one's helping. I'm in grownups. Help me. No one cares. <laughs> just shoot me, guy. <laughs> I'm dead. Ben Schwartz. So I, I get in the middle, and then it World turns red. Missy. <laughs> Wrong miss. Mm-hmm. Ah. Wrong miss. Cusco llama. And they don't help me. And now I'm in the middle of light, and I'm resting. Mm-hmm. And now no one can go. And so I hold up my hand, international sign of don't run me over, whatever. I start rocking it again. I turn on my Karen Wood calves, and I start to go left <laughs> with no one's helping, none. And I help people. I've actually jumped out and helped people. And I start oh, yeah. to turn, and then I crank. I get in and crank the wheel. Get out again, again. Everyone's like, "What's going on?" That guy looks like he's in a. They go, "Who is that girl?" So anyway, why are you letting? Even if it's you think Marlo I'm a girl, Thomas. Why are you letting a girl push it? They're like, "Meg Ryan's in trouble." So because I have a hat on, I'm like, this. "So anyway, I finally get it over ourselves. somewhere, and I just." Okay. Get out of the fucking. You no, know, they go, Sydney Sweeney's in trouble. <laughs> she got a bob. <laughs> so well, you know, I'm glad you made it safe. I've had, a, you know, we've had a lot of rain in California and uh, it's just a mess. I mean, I'm I'm going out in the rain. I'm walking to my car and the grass is like soaked. So it's like, <laughs> you know, and then the I open the door. I don't know if it's the rust from the rain. It's like, you know, so I get in the seat. It's leather. <laughs> so, you know, I, I'm a safe driver. So I check the rear view mirror, you know? Yeah. And I put the windshield wipers on cause it's pouring rain. <laughs> you know what I mean? I mean, yeah. and then I went to a, a shop and they had a guy with a drill. Uh, what would he sound like? <laughs> that <laughs> tire gun. It's not- yeah. You're tired. <laughs> then I went over I to the bandsaw. Meow, meow. <laughs> this is a character I used to do called sound effecty. And sometimes you use the same effect for different things. So I turn on the radio. <laughs> I the you only got four. <laughs> I yeah. switch gears. <laughs> you know, it's These a good one. It's windshield wipers effect. when they go. <clears throat> it's like so loud. But when it's dry, they go. <laughs> <laughs> they come back. They're like, fuck, dude, it's not raining. You're stressing me out. Just try it. <laughs> Put the seat back. <laughs> when I get in my um, car, I have like I have like 18 seat adjustments. So I'm like this. <laughs> you don't have it all preset. You're just <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. boy. Well, oh boy. Um, Give me in a news story and I'll, I'll oh, do yeah. this. Uh, one news story. Asked me to do that again. Any story. Nick, one story came up. up is uh, a pregnant stingray. I don't know if we have a picture. There's a stingray <laughs> that got pregnant named Charlotte in, oh, in North Carolina. Okay, let me see. And they don't know how? Oh, it's they the virgin it's, stingray. Yeah. Okay. Well, okay. Here, well, it here says it's solved. <laughs> no. Do, I think, are you going to play it or no? I don't think so. It's just a just stingray a that's very cute. It was in an aquarium full of sharks, so they didn't know how. There was so no other stingrays in it. That's the story. So it's so. like a immaculate, immaculate. conception. So yes. as a beetle would say it, well, you know, there was a little, uh, you know, a little aqua creature, you know, mm-hmm. that has a stinger. They call her the stingrays. You know, she's a lady, but she's with <laughs> right? sharks, and they don't, they don't ever get together. You know, the shark doesn't go, mm-hmm. ah, would you be my girlfriend? Never happens. But all of a sudden, she's preggers going to give her babies, right? And they don't right. know how. It may have been oh, a, a miracle. Don't know how. <laughs> <laughs> they don't know how. See, the key, if anyone's listening, the key yes. to doing a Beatle accent is mm-hmm. always sound like you're asking asking a question. Hey, mm-hmm. hey, Paul, did you go to the store? I told you. I went to the store. Did you go or not? I just told you. I went to the store. Oh, it's you, a thing. you anyway, did or didn't? Cut it out. No, I like it. The, and <laughs> I these just are, told you. These are three comments that I thought were funny on the uh, story. One said, oh, uh, has anyone uh, checked if it's one of Nick Cannon's kids? It's kind of funny, right? That's good. Yeah. And uh, maybe, a bad one. maybe it 
it comes back as Steve Irwin, or maybe he's the dad. Remember Steve Irwin? Oh my God. Yes. That's a little dark. I, I was always, on the Tonight Show with him. Great guy. Australian good. guy. It's Just always good to bring a tragedy into a joke comment. And then uh, the last <laughs> one was, oh, it's the Sturgeon Mary. Sturgeon <laughs> Mary. That's not bad. Uh, they're not, yeah, there's better. I, here's my news story. And I don't know if it's true, but when Biden is given a speech and stuff, he's got his staff backstage. And sometimes President Biden will go off the teleprompter and meander about. And his staff gets very emotional about it. You know, like, oh, my, he's off the teleprompter. He's off the teleprompter. So I don't know if this is true, but some one of them knew Nicolas Cage. So they bring in Nicolas Cage backstage and he expresses how emotionally they are. He's like sort of a therapy guest. So Biden's out there, and then I, you know, the dog, and we went out in the river, and then the staff's going, no, no. And Nicholas Cage goes, all right. And he drops to his knees and goes, why, God, why? That was a long way to go. <laughs> I like it. How <laughs> do you know where we went? <laughs> well, we went I don't there. know. It's just something funny. If you're ever upset about anything, you get audited by the IRS. You just call Nicholas Cage, why, the mother of God? <laughs> That's a, he probably says that in every movie. Let's look at this. J Lo came out with something. This isn't even a big story. It just J Lo came out with a something J-Lo's else. Big. Yeah. God damn. This is oh, me. Sh- it's a it's, it's an album and a movie. Yeah. Right. Hybrid. Uh, runs on electricity. It's a hybrid something, and it's a movie doc album. And she was in the donuts commercial. I wish. I think she's in so much. She just needs to take off, like just disappear for like a whole day. If I didn't see her for a whole day, <laughs> I would be like, oh, OK, now I miss her. But she is really but the, in your grill. Yeah, and she's, she's good. She's good. She's very good. Uh, she's gorgeous. So somebody decided to use her husband's Dunkin Donut commercial against her in, in a review. It's just watery. <laughs> is that what they it's, did? <laughs> yeah, that's, her her album is as watery as the Dunkin' Donuts thing where Matt N- Damon, really funny, says, how do you like them donuts? Because he said, I like them apples in Goodwill Hunting. Oh, I didn't even Louis get that. Louis C.K. did a stand-up bit about it. Yeah. So, I like so there's, they're going out of their way to kick her in the balls about the donuts commercial. Um, oh, yeah. my God. It's a it's it's a mashup. They they take a dig at Ben and and, and her oh, Jennifer fuck, yeah. by mashing the Dunkin' Donuts versus the thing. <laughs> I like you know for people not in show business, it's really hard. I mean Jennifer Lopez is just incredibly to stay that fit, just that, and you got to be camera ready every time you leave your house. And then she does albums. She's jumping, singing. She does movies. Huh. You know what are you gonna do? Her skin is like pretend. I don't know. There's no wrinkles. There's nothing. <laughs> she's gorgeous yeah all right right now we have a surprise guest on superfly Ooh, jason <laughs> jason kelsey uh-huh oh yep. and then after that we're gonna after jason we're gonna go look at some fan impressions and do a little critique and give some notes and things oh great let's do that's it. our show So because it's a new year and everyone has their resolutions, mm-hmm. I I was going to try working out and I didn't even try that one, but I am going to eat better. And I think that's the key, eating what you want. And also I'm into the new world of having stuff delivered. And if it's really mm-hmm. good, there's a place called Good Chop where they have really good meats. They also have uh, seafood mm-hmm. and it comes right to your door and that's kind of what i'm looking for yeah because i i thought of this phrase a while back that energy is the new high Mm -hmm. so energy is a great feeling and when you eat um high protein meals like steaks free range organic chicken breast this is all you get with good chop plus sustainable and wild caught seafood salmon which i eat a lot of pacific Mm -hmm. cod scallops shrimp and more yeah, Good Chop offers fully customizable boxes of high quality meat and seafood delivered to your door. On your schedule, they're vacuum sealed, frozen at peak freshness. You stock them up, cook them when you want. They have over 70 high quality cuts uh, you were just talking about. 
Mm-hmm. I am a shrimp guy. <laughs> You're a shrimps guy. <laughs> I like shrimps, <laughs> and I like uh, the prime filet mignon. Pretty, pretty standard stuff, but they do it right. Yes, um, and I think it would benefit our audience because I talked mm-hmm. to some of our audience, and a lot of them eat food. And so I said, you know what? Yeah, this is for you. It sources its meat from uh, and seafood exclusively from American farms and fisheries. So you're supporting local and. How about this? Price per meal starts at three seventy four, not three hundred and seventy four, like you would think, because you live in Beverly Hills. But <laughs> it's three dollars and seventy four cents. That's unbelievable. unbelievable. A whole oh, meal. Man. Have you have you gone to the grocery store lately? <laughs> God, you nothing. It's like six, six items. That'll be one hundred and thirty eight dollars. Would you like a bag? And no, it's only 20. three items. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no antibiotics, no added hormones. Nope, not going to do mm-hmm. it. Nothing mm-hmm. artificial. No. So they're confident. They uh, they offer 100% money back guarantee. You got to love Good Chop or you get your money back. Go to goodchop.com slash superfly120 mm-hmm. and use code superfly120. The number is 120. And get $120 off across your first four boxes. That's code <laughs> Superfly120 at goodshop.com slash Superfly120 for $120 off. And for those of you that forgot, goodshop.com slash Superfly120 code Superfly120. Ladies and gentlemen, our next guest is our first and only (laughs) guest on Superfly. Considered one of the National Football League's greatest centers of all time. Six-time first-team All-Pro. Seven-time Pro Pro (laughs) Bowl. Super Bowl champion, Mr. (laughs) Jason Kelsey! (laughs) (laughs) Thanks for having me, guys. That's a hell of an intro. Are you kidding? All all (laughs) comedians love athletes. We love people who are actually actually brave and bump into things and we're just <laughs> this is a feminine job let's face it look at our hair <laughs> <laughs> like those girls <laughs> i think uh i think all athletes wish they were performers of some kind whether it was you know musical artists or comedians you know we grew up watching you guys and um you know i think comedians are you know I, I, for me, going out there and bashing my brain into somebody seems relatively um, <laughs> normal. Uh, getting up on stage and talking in front of the, or in front of a bunch of people yeah. and letting your soul out there is a whole nother level of, uh, of uh, I don't know, putting yourself out it there. So, anyways, me, <laughs> it, it terrifies me. Stand up. I, I had years of stage fright. David was a natural. Just came out and blasted it. But I was, I was yeah. just panicked <laughs> all day. I was going to ask you, like, did you ever line up against a nose tackle where you went? Holy shit, this is the biggest guy I've ever faced. Because they go 350. Yeah. Is anyone ever more than 350 pounds trying to kill you? Sure. Really? Yeah, I mean, <laughs> uh, yeah. So usually they'll be listed still about 350. But I know like Vita Vea, I played him a bunch. And I know from talking to guys in Tampa Bay, he'll regularly be pushing 400 pounds <laughs> on the scales. And yeah, there's 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 games where I'm giving up 100 pounds to the guy across from me. <laughs> and, um, and what's your strategy? Yeah. Well, hopefully they call plays where I get to utilize my speed and agility against guys like that. But yes. some of those guys are really good. You know, I think um, for me, my, um, I guess, strength was definitely second level blocking. So blocking linebackers, safeties down yes. the field. So, um, you know, Jeff Stoutland, my, our offensive line coach, uh, really would try and get me up there. He knew that, you know, it was not a good proposition for a game plan to have me manned up on a 400 pound guy all game long. So (laughs) he would design plays with the uh, emphasis of trying to get me up to the second level. So I got to appreciate my coach for not putting me in too many bad situations after 400 pound comedians. And it's hard. I know. I mean, because then you go to the green room and go, where's my dinner? And they go, it's gone. I I just want to bring this up based on what you just said, Jason. Yeah. I looked at the combine because I know a brother's. I've got three older brothers and there's a competition there. But in one key metric, which I thought was interesting and goes to your ability on the football field, the 20 yard shuttle, you were 414. Your brother, Travis, was 4.42. 
So that's the ability wow. to go five yards this way, five yards that way, which is kind of was your super talent as a as a snapper. yeah speed yeah no turn. yeah you hit it you hit it the nail on the head right there. I mean, my brother was probably better than his time. That drill is as much about speed and agility as it is kind of your preparation for it. Mm-hmm. If you hit the steps and the turns properly. Yeah you're going to have a better time. Right. Travis, knowing him, he just went out there and ran as fast as he could. Still a good time, but he could have been better. I'm guaranteeing that. <laughs> but okay. my, yeah, my, that was def, and that's been one of the metrics to gauge, especially um, your centers or your more agility driven linemen that you mm-hmm. want to have on your team. The 20 yard shuttle is a great metric to determine which guys are going to be good at that. Well, I that's looked at a lot of your that's yeah. the only metric Dana I would talk about at the dinner table if I was chasing. <laughs> That's all I got. <laughs> I he's, bring he, he's bringing up Super Bowls yeah, and yeah. all pro. Yeah, no, it's a, uh, I'll, 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 it's, it's something nice to have. At least I got one thing. <laughs> and, you know, and I, I watched a lot of your highlights last night and you're like the wide sweep. You're out there sprinting like really fast. Yeah. You, you got, wait a minute, that guy's the center. Yeah. He's like 20 yards over that way. So it's very interesting for me to figure that out. But it always seemed, like a tough, a tough position, especially the pressure of hiking the ball to the punter, you know, or a oh, field man. goal. I mean, and those are yeah. like 20 yards. How far? And you're, just, yeah. so, I mean, you have to have nerves of steel or how do you calm yourself down at that moment? Is it just reps? Yeah. I mean, like everything, the more practice you get, your the nerves are always the highest whenever it's the first time you're doing something right. Mm-hmm. Like the first NFL start you're going to be like, man, what is this going to feel like? I've never done this before. Your first time playing a premier player, you're like, ah, I don't know how this is going to go. Yeah. Your first time running a play that you've never run, right? Those are kind of always where the nerves are the most heightened. So whether it's practice or game reps, the more repetitions you get, the more those nerves subside. Um, yeah, I mean, center is a position that I think a lot of guys want to play until they have a bad snap. Like we had a buddy of mine <laughs> play guard, and he's like, man, center, you, you guys are double teaming a lot. You know, you're not manned up as much. And, uh, you know, I wish uh, I played a little bit of that. And then he got pushed in at center and had a couple bad snaps. He's like, man, I never want to play center again. <laughs> like, well, it is. Dude, you have two jobs. A, you, you, exactly. you hike, and then you got to look up and go, oh, wait, now the guy bashes my brains in. I forgot about that. <laughs> I know. You <laughs> yeah, have exactly. just one hand down. So everyone else is like a gorilla. They're like, Rrr, and you got one down and one's concentrating on that. And then here are the field That's goal right. for the win. And here it is. It's over his head. What a shit show. <laughs> yeah. The game is over. <laughs> and the center <laughs> fucked it up. The, the center. center. <laughs> the center of universal no, pain. This. <laughs> yeah. And it's a, it's a, it's a, the snap is like a foregone conclusion. Everybody's expectation is that that the snap is going to be perfect every time. And yeah. True. The reality is it's not. And um, the uh, unfortunate thing is when it does happen in a crucial situation <laughs> or a game on the line, I mean, Such it's, there's no getting away from that one. Now you're also, <laughs> Such a you're in the, the chain of command. Like nothing happens till you do that. And the, the quarterback yeah. is up there. A lot of times, all the teams in the NFL, it seems very sophisticated as a casual fan and they're calling audibles. And I remember yeah. they're going thinking, Really? He's going to do that? Does he know what he's doing? <laughs> do you ever question in your head what the audible is? You just do you like, out audible him and say, I'm it. calling an audible over your audible and I'm not hiking it yet? <laughs> we, <laughs> yeah. Well, it, it, it has happened before. There's some, so there's some audibles that are more geared for the back end of the defense for mm-hmm. the quarterback. And there's some audibles that are more geared for the front, which is more what I'm seeing. So there are, there have been times with every quarterback I've played where I've been like, no, 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 this isn't the look that we want to kill this play to or the look we want to run this run to. Mm-hmm. Uh, but in passing game, um, he's taking full control. Um, and there's times where, you know, the quarterback at all times has final say. You can't have two guys up there like, no, no we should do this. <laughs> yeah. No, we should do that. No, we should. So you give that to the quarterback. Everybody, if the quarterback wants to do something, that's what we're doing. And there's times where, especially in like a blitz pickup, where he'll send the protection in a specific direction. And you're like, eh, I'm pretty positive it's coming from over here. And you might relay that if he, uh, at the end of the day, though, if he wants to go over here, the most important thing is that the quarterback knows where he's hot from, where he wants to deliver the ball to. So, yeah, that does happen from time to time. But would you, are, you, are, okay, go ahead, David. I, I just want to know. We're just so excited, Jason. We're are, very excited. Are, <laughs> the huddles must well, be it's the same here. Because when I see a huddle, 
And I, I could imagine being in it. It's like 22 zipper drive. And then they just go, if I was the receiver, I'm like, wait, what happened? Am I the zipper yeah. in this? Because yeah. everyone just gets it right every single time. And I think, how? Well, they don't. They do not, <laughs> unfortunately. That's what it seems like. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Caterpillar one. <laughs> yeah. And you go, what's happening? They go, booty liquor on five. And you go, is this a play or is he talking to me? So I don't know because what do you listen for in the play? Do you have to get any yeah. instructions or is it? Absolutely. Yeah. You, you, you get used to listening to the portion of the play that pertains to you. Yeah. And for the center, really the whole thing, other than the route concept is important to you. Like you need to know the formation. You need to know the snap count. You need to know what the play is that we're running. If it's a run play or a pass play mm -hmm. and the protection or run concept. Um, everybody gets in tune to listening to the things that are important for their job. Right. Um, the quarterback, obviously having the ultimate, uh, and tight ends to a certain extent of needing to listen to everything. And that's why those guys tend to be the most knowledgeable throughout the entire offense. They but, jam their head in farther in that huddle. Some just kind of kick back on the side. <laughs> yeah. The tackles are like, just give me what the uh, 62 got it. And, you know, they yeah. don't care about has the it, half of the stuff. Has, the, has it gotten more sophisticated? Because I'm from the 60s, you know, John Brody and the 49ers. And I swear they would go, hut one, hut two. But nowadays, it seems like Brock Purdy says, what's up, what's up, what's up? But what is he saying? Is he saying well, what's up? Yeah. I don't know Brock Purdy's specific one. I know uh, Dak Prescott does. Um, oh, my gosh. It's uh, We were joking about this all season. I Campbell Soup, Campbell Soup, Campbell Soup. Yeah. There's, <laughs> I, I would say in some ways it's gotten less convoluted mm. because, to, to David, your point, the more – words you have in the play call yeah the more chance somebody's going to miss something so, <laughs> so now so now there's a, kind of a, a been a move back to like how can we simplify these things with code words or words that we use all the time to, so that players the moment they hear that they know okay got it i know what this concept is right. and you can shrink it down into one two word phrases so at the line of scrimmage, though, the snap count, it's so specific to each team. Most of the time, you want a lead-in, right? So whatever it is, like if it's like yeah, a hut, hut, hike, right? For right. us, it's color number. So it's white 80, white 80, said hut. The reason you don't just go up there and say, said hut, is because everybody be jumping off sides. You got that little lead-in, like, hey, we're getting ready. We're comes. getting ready. Here it comes. Bow, right? Is it always and the then same the defense, thing, or is every no. play he says what it's going on, and then you don't want them to hear? Correct. Yeah. It's either in the huddle or at the line of scrimmage. There'll be code words to let you know. Like if we're no huddle, he'll say, you know, whatever the code word is. When I was with uh, Howard Mudd, it was like pink and then a two digit number. And the first digit was always what it was on. So it was like, you know, pink 15, it was on one, you know, pink 32 it was on three. So you, you kind of <laughs> would try and think yeah. at any time you could say, you didn't know you're a uh, hey, pink, pink. And somebody, hey, 32, and then you knew it was on three, right? <laughs> so there's all sorts of codes and different ways to figure out at the line of scrimmage or in the huddle, there's just on three. Like, hey, duh, 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 on one, duh, 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 on three. So I got, that's, that's generally That's why I goes. got out of the game. Uh, <laughs> I played flag football, and I loved it. We Did had you? plays. We had ready break. I mean, fifth, sixth grade. I was the halfback. Um, and then tackle football came in at five, one, <laughs> 91 pounds, freshman in high school. I look like a fetus with shoes. So I, they said, there's a cross country team. No one will hit you. So I went out <laughs> that way, but this is a question I have for you, like, and yeah. professional athletes in general. So you finished the game and you've gotten mm -hmm. your ass kicked. I think the sound has gotten better. I don't know what it is, but I feel the violence or maybe the TVs are better. I really feel the violence or hear it bone cracking yeah. McCaffrey's going yeah. up and he just, uh, so wow. what, are, what is your protocol to, to get healed? Do you have a team? Do you get a massage? Yeah. You go in the sauna. I mean, what, is there a whole metric that you go through to see if you're hurt first of all, and whatever, like, what do you, what's your, what do you do? Yeah. If, if you have an acute injury, you're seeing the trainer to see if you need treatment on it or how bad it is. You might need an MRI mm -hmm. or an X-ray to determine whether you're okay. Anything outside of that, a bruise or just general soreness, you have kind of anything at your disposal that some, every guy likes different things. Um, I was big into sauna. I was big into massage. Mm -hmm. um, lifting weights always made me feel better because it naturally kind of pumps the blood in there. Mm -hmm. uh, some guys love acupuncture. Some guys love chiropractic. 
uh, stuff. Some is guys it, love. Uh, is it true? There's a bowl of Vicodins in the weight room by the door. No, there used to be. There is a. They, they cracked down on that. Oh, that's a good. <laughs> I might have to come by. over. <laughs> <laughs> we have them here in a little bowl. I, I, there, we can't get them to you. But they always say that this time of year, everyone's beaten up. This is when the playoffs yeah. start. Everyone's mm-hmm. beaten up. So everyone's nurturing something. And it just feels, uh, I just want to dovetail into what, I mean, we all know you have a decision to make, whether you're going to yeah. retire or, and so, and also what I've read about is that the adrenal rush of being a professional football player and the camaraderie is such an intense life that then people go outside of that and where are they going to get Hard that to rush? With, yeah. So we would yeah. vote for show business of any way you want to be in it because okay. we think it's an emotionally violent sport. Like if I get off this podcast, I'll be thinking, ah, I talk too much or I should ask that question. So are you, yeah. what do you think? Are you going to be in the booth? You're going to go on movies maybe, or, or are you going to go back and play for the Eagles? <laughs> you have 10 seconds. Yeah. <laughs> okay, here we go. Um, we need a I don't know. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I don't yeah, I think, know. Okay. Um, that's a good yeah, answer. That's what I'm, I'm trying to figure it out right now. There's right now exploring different opportunities. If I end up retiring, uh, still working out and staying in shape, if I end up playing again. Um, but that's what I've heard from all the former players is, you know, when you're playing, it's like this every week, right? It's, oh, we just won. Oh, we just got our ass kicked. Oh, we just were in the playoffs. Oh, we're out. Like, it's it's very much that's the life you're in, and it's play-by-play play like that as well. Mm-hmm. And um, all these guys, when they get done, it's like, man, you're just kind of here, man. You you very rarely get these peaks, mm-hmm. and you got to find a way to kind of get do that. It as much. <laughs> yeah. Hey, well, I mean, some guys get into it yeah. for real. Into it. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe this is a good time. Uh, I don't want to keep you too long, but you have shown um, capability as a performer. Uh, I think oh, the, no. the the underdog speech, uh, yeah. as you oh, know, yeah. and you must have been told about. I mean, it, it was like not like a football player giving a speech. It had rhythm. It had timing. <laughs> I don't know if you wrote it. But the list of it and then the what underdogs are, I mean, it's it's very show busy. So I could see you very organically <laughs> when you want to retire. I mean, we want to can we take a look at it? We oh, just yeah, have just a, little a little clip, clip of it. Let's do it. Zach Gers can't block. Red Zellick's too old. <laughs> Randy Graham was drafted too high. Zach Gers. Randy Curry ain't got it. <laughs> oh, hell, I can't fit the scheme. Are you doing Aladdin on Broadway after this? (laughs) (laughs) Aladdin in Philadelphia (laughs) edition. Here we go. (laughs) That's that's like to me, Chris Farley, as close as I've seen to Chris Farley. And uh, it's such a great rhythm. Um, Well, I'm going to do one as a comedian. David Spade ain't funny. (laughs) Adam Sandler couldn't be a movie star. (laughs) <laughs> anyway, but, uh, how did you think of that? And also yeah. what the hell are you wearing? Because it looks like a wizard of Oz outfit or something. Yeah. Sure. Um, I guess I'll start with what I'm wearing. That's a, in Philadelphia, there's a parade mummers parade mm-hmm. and it's been done for a very long time. And everybody dresses up in these okay. ornate, ridiculous costumes. And mm-hmm. it's, uh, I think it has roots all the way back to Europe at some point, but that's something that happens every day. Uh, New Year's Day in Philadelphia, and you I figured if yeah. if we're doing a Philadelphia parade, I'll do a Philadelphia style. <laughs> and fortunately, there was a just perfect green, eagle colored version of that uh, outfit <laughs> available great. in my size. Mm. But um, and then the speech, um, I couldn't after you win a Super Bowl, you're you're it's such a high, right? Yeah, you're, you're you're it's the pinnacle of your career, and you start thinking about all the things you had to do Mm -hmm. to get there selfishly. And then you start thinking about everything your teammates had to do and your coaches and the city. So it all really just came together very organically. I remember I would be up till two or three in the morning after the game. And I didn't even know if I was going to get a chance to make a speech, to be honest with you. But I just can't, these narratives are floating around in my head and I'm like waking my wife up and like, Hey, what do you think about this? Like, what if I said something like that? And she's like, Will you go to sleep? Like, why are you bothering me with this? And um, I I think I probably, I, I didn't really have a full thing written down, but I remember I was keeping track of different things and different 
guys and and what they had to do to overcome to get to that moment. Yeah. Uh, that was the theme of the the team. So there were just a lot of things that came together organically for that to happen. Um, but yeah, it was it was something that flowed out. I mean, I somehow managed to still get it together after an entire I don't know forty blocks of drinking beers and celebrating with yeah. fans and <laughs> like it wasn't like i just walked up there there was like i was like three hours yeah, in voice so. is a little uh thrash. exactly we were we had done enough uh spelling chants for the eagles i don't know the eagles chant is e a g l e s eagles i mean you don't get much more like rudimentary yeah, than really just guttural. spelling the word yeah, but over and very over guttural all day, over and <laughs> yes over and spelling it <laughs> so how many how many I beers i'm oh, sorry <laughs> i have a question for dana no okay I, <laughs> Before we get to how many beers you've had, which the over under sure. is forty, um, yeah. when when you this is a quick question about this year's Super Bowl, uh, do you would you have known what to do in that coin toss, or did you know something was up with that coin toss or not? Uh, you're talking about the overtime yeah. decision. Yeah, I mean, we as a team have always talked about um, for playoff overtime, mm-hmm. meaning the mm-hmm. second team or the other team is guaranteed a possession yeah. of kicking. You want to have knowledge of what you're trying to get that second possession. Mm-hmm. Um, I have never, I had never even heard of it mm-hmm. uh, described until Kyle Shanahan went over it in his post game press conference. At mm-hmm. the time I was like, what are they doing? Why would they, this doesn't make sense to receive. Yeah. Uh, but I think after Kyle saying that, I mean, there's, there's logic behind it and nobody was getting in the end zone. If it goes field goal, field goal, you want to have the ball third. Yeah. Um, oh, he's thinking but one, I still, one, one more than that. He's thinking one farther. Exactly. They have but four I think downs. The, yeah. the, the reality is, I think, just personally, you would rather have – you want to be the first team with the ability to end the game first because you're in the driver's seat right. as to be aggressive, passive. You have more – I don't know. There's more just on the line with that second possession. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know that – it would have taken a lot probably for Kansas city to kick a field goal. It would have had to have been like a fourth and like five plus, I bet for them to mm-hmm. relinquish the ball back to San Francisco after that, I would bet. Yeah. But either way, I think, um, you know, I don't know what the analytics say. I think that you can kind of get those numbers to say whatever you want. I feel like, True. like if you, if, if you want to, uh, you know, be the team with the ball third, you find a way to skew them to say that if you want to be the time, uh, the team with the ball second, you can find a way to get him to say that. Um, but uh, I think that that was the first time I'd really seen somebody with the mindset that they were going to receive first with these new overtime rules being what they are. And also the Niners would have to do prevent defense in a sense. Don't give them a touchdown. And so then you give mm-hmm. that opening to Patrick and your, yeah. and your brother. And uh, at, I, I was watching it just as a Niner fan, although I'm a huge Kansas city fan. And yeah. the Eagles as well. And but, Eagles. There we go. But I, uh, <laughs> I was like, oh, no. And I told my wife, I go, it's over. You know, Patrick, yeah. and in that time frame, four downs, go, go, go. They were going so fast down the field, too. You're like, God yeah. damn. And San Francisco is so slow, <sighs> inching, and then they're just doing chunks. And you go, oh, boy, this yeah. is it. The moment they uh, kicked the field goal, I felt really confident that the Chiefs are going to go down and win it. Uh, just Patrick is so good in those situations. Yeah. You know, he gets more, uh, you know, everybody's talked about, it. you know, he gets four, pos- he gets four downs instead of three yes. to try and get a first down. Yeah. Right. And huge difference. Um, so I think it was, you know, and Sam Fran was gassed at that point. I mean, they'd already put up a lot and, you know, done a great job all game long. Uh, mm-hmm. But the, the later in the game it gets, the harder it gets for the defenses to defend yeah. what's happening. You know, Jason, just I for, heard a rumor yeah. about, mm-hmm. Travis was yelling at Andy Reid during the game, and I heard what he said. The audio was off, but someone told it me came he, out. He said, "Why did you tell me to get out of Bitcoin?" Is that true? <laughs> um, I don't know. Is Bitcoin up? Not. I, I feel like 50. Andy probably would. Why is it fifty all of a sudden again? <laughs> oh, it's going up. Man. Gosh please. dang it! Mm. Yeah, he's an old school coach. He he wouldn't be into the Bitcoin. I don't think. <laughs> Well, let's we we do an impression yeah. thing on here before we let you go. First of we all, have I, one Dana, different, yeah, go ahead. This this came about because I ran into Jason just so people know that are listening. Oh uh, yeah, yeah, it's a little random, but I saw him at the U two concert, and uh, Sandler wanted to say hi to him, and uh, I did too, but we didn't want to be weirdos, so 
but we went over and we talked to him. Uh, <laughs> the, by the way, Jason, do you remember? Oh, I sent you these. This, I couldn't so this say is, anything. This is us. This was awesome. Yeah. And then, yeah. uh, and then I said, I'll take a picture of you and Adam with my phone. And here's the two pictures I took, Dana. Do you have those, Greg? That's the one that yeah, works. That's a- Okay, so that's the one that worked. That we worked. got another one. So we we talked to him for a minute with Howie Long's in there with there. He's got the athletes. We have all the uh, goofy comedians on our side, uh, and so Jason was very nice, and uh, we had a great time. And then uh, the show was great. Bono, you know, it, th- there's so many 60th birthdays. He's giving shout outs for about 29 minutes because there was 300 <laughs> people because everyone's old that goes to YouTube. Am I so, Yeah. He's going, ah, oh, Chris Rock, happy birthday, I got a pint of beer. You got someone up in the, in the bleachers, 47 years of age. In my boogie, yeah. I didn't mean to boogie. Oh, there we go. That's, oh, there we that's go. Spade. Yeah, that's, that's Spade's first shot at these two. Jason's like, Nailed just it. knock one out. That's Sandler with a bad <laughs> facelift. And then I go, no, I got it now. I fixed my camera. Here's the second one. A completely blurry one. Uh, I time. took one that was a total disaster. Anyway, Jason, you were cool. Thank you. And we're going to end this by um, wasting your time more because we have people submit impressions. Yes. And, and I don't think this is you, but I think it reminded us. You, they said we should look at this one. You went to the level of this character in your speech. So I haven't, we haven't seen this, but here's an impression of it. We haven't seen it. Hi, Let's see if it's I'm cool. Matt Foley, I, I think I know and I'm a motivational so speaker. A <laughs> couple things about myself. I'm 35 years old, Dude, he's recently divorced, ah. and I live in a van down by the river. Okay. Nice. Dude, that was spot on. That, that, was, was, that was good. That's impressive. He really I got a few. The... I have a few notes, Jason. Um, okay. He was thrice divorced. Ah. Uh, recently divorced. Uh, but I did like the movement. I like the hoarseness of the voice, which uh, yeah. you had sort of down. The tone was great. Yeah. Tone was great. <laughs> uh, I think he rushed it a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. It just, you want to say, in a van down by the river. Like that little pause. Really milk it. And maybe when you get close to me, bump your head into me. That was a nice (laughs) trick. I mean, I guess, uh, Jay, someone like you really can squat. Like, like Farley could really, he was a football player in college, right? Or high school. But also the guy could, if he could do a deeper squat and do that move that Chris does. But it's really good. Uh, that was a good what one. was the name of that guy? I want to mention him. <laughs> Craig? We'll give, him we'll give him a shout out later in post. His um, name Jason. is uh, Dr. <laughs> Phil Finemore. Doctor? Dr. Doctor. Phil Finemore? Did someone just that? write stupid on my forehead? <laughs> um, Sorry I'm late for your uh, heart surgery. I was working on my Christopher Walken impression. <laughs> oh, man, do it. Why? Ready uh, now. So, Jason, well, uh, it's been a pleasure. I think the world uh, of uh, professional athletes and the way you handle yourself, you and your brother have a great podcast. uh, And um, I wish you all the best. I think you can, when you want to be either in the movies, television, or being in the booth, uh, calling games or whatever you want to do, I think you'll do great. But I I know what it's like. We could leave. Like Daniel Day-Lewis could come back this year and make a movie. And we go, oh, where was he? Right? Five years. Once you're out, you can't go back in, basically. It's a little trickier. Exactly. Unless you're Tom Brady. He's still, there's, there's a rumor. Yeah. yeah, yeah. He, <laughs> he, get, he will be welcome back at any time if he wants So to. did we help you well, inform your decision at all? Or will you talk to your wife <laughs> about Dana and David? <laughs> I, have, I have not t- thought too much of show business. I've thought a little bit about the booth and football mm-hmm. stuff. But um, I, I appreciate you guys having me on. Uh, this is such an honor to just talk to both of you. As I was telling David Thank at the you. show, I mean, it was such a special moment to meet you guys uh, and like the the pedestal of uh, comedians and just uh, just the peak of that craft. It's it's such an honor to even be on here and talk to you guys. So. Thank you very much, Dana. Thank, Thank you, David. Thank Thanks you. for having me. Thank you. All right. We'll talk to you soon, bud. Out in the real world. Sounds good. Well, that was fun, Dana. I love talking to him. Um, awesome. And, and he's very informative and he's a funny dude. He's got his shit together, it seems. Yeah. I mean, it's just fun to talk to athletes. It's such a high wire lifestyle. And to be a center, he's pretty funny just about lining up against giant people who want to kill him. <laughs> it's so <laughs> violent. You know, ball. I actually was watching the yeah. puppy bowl a little bit this year and mm-hmm. I bet on one of them. And it's always a bummer when they get hurt, they go into the blue tent, 
you know, pull a hammy and then they're out and that's it. There's all my money down the drain. So is Concussion the puppy bowl real? I have to ask just in case. The puppy bowl is it real. Like, it is real. Okay. That's a good, that's fine. It's literally the hard to bet on because literally they just put all these cute puppies on like something that looks like a football field and they just run around and poop and bark and it's adorable. And, well, I know there is, I don't think, I, th I don't know if it's in every state, but the toddler bowl and they, they just have a, a diaper changing tent uh, in the toddler <laughs> that's it? bowl. They go, they just he's drop coming out. Number 31 is coming out. He has to, he just dropped the load in his diaper. He's got to get changed. <laughs> he's going to the blue tent. We put a thousand babies on the football field. See which one walks to the goal line. <laughs> yeah. Which one yeah. looks the most like Sydney Sweeney. She's our right. theme guest today. Sydney, yeah, I know. She is our theme because she's on SNL this week. So, okay. So yes. let's, uh, let's look at some more impressions. We just saw a motivational speaker. Mm -hmm. It's pretty good. And yep. we will go to the next one. Let's see what we think. All right. This okay, is jo ahead. Jonathan don't know who this is. Emmerling. Hey, We've never seen Dan this. and David. Three quick impressions for you. Impression number one, Jordan Peterson at the birth of his daughter. Oh, three. This is the happiest I've ever been in my life. Number two, uh, Nick Offerman relaying some disappointing news. Okay. He said no. And impression number three is Severus Snape sexually harassing <laughs> Harry Potter. <laughs> Mr. Potter. If you wish to pass this class, I suggest you remove your blouse and underclothes immediately. Thanks, guys. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Actually, okay. <laughs> well, first of all, yeah. Offbeat impressions. You don't hear a lot of Nick Offerman. And uh, what was the first one? Um, the fir I like the third one, then the second one, then the first one. So the first, the first one, one was... Jordan Peterson. Oh, oh yeah. Jordan I, okay, Peterson. that's offbeat, yeah. too. That's that's definitely offbeat. Jordan Peterson sort of has a high kind of Canadian voice. Women don't like men that are too uh, weak or to baby him. <laughs> Mine's bad. His was actually no, that's accurate. Good. That's a, it's good uh, to do it. It's sort of a, a good way to do it. You do you don't go too long and you just get a hook yes. in there that sounds kind of like him. Nick Offerman was like quick. No, that sounded was, like him before yeah. you can tear it apart and you get worse. You sounded like him. You know, yeah, they're nice, quick, what I would call micro impressions, just mm -hmm. right to the point. So good job, Jonathan. Uh, the hat was interesting. Gave you kind of a festive vibe. The, the ear Not necessary, but it, it, it makes I did, you know, I thought it was going to do Elmer Fudd or something, maybe. Yeah, but, yeah, you know. so did I. Something with the hat. But uh, yeah. it did. I did nice. like it. Okay, let's see another one. Oh, it's, we've got a young this lady is, here. This is Allison Mary. Allison. We haven't right. seen these. Hi, Dana and David. My name is Allie, and this is my impression of Jennifer Coolidge from Legally Blonde. I'm taking the dog, dumbass. <laughs> you look like the 4th of July. That makes me want to have a hot dog real bad. Dumbass. And this is my impression of Jennifer Coolidge from A Cinderella Story. Okay. Oh, Sam, you're not very pretty and you're not very bright. I'm so glad we had that talk. Thank you. <laughs> Are those the real lines? Very it's nice. Funny. Yeah, I thought that was good. Yeah, she, that, that she nailed it. I mean, I thought that was a great Jennifer Coolidge. Tone was pretty good. Um, it kind of, if you close your eyes. I thought she'd do a White good. Lotus one because that's kind of her latest greatest hit, I think. You know, but I'm it's, stuck it's, with she the has gaze. a character that she played. Yeah, yeah, I remember she's on the boat. Yeah, no, she was incredible in that show. Yeah, yeah. White Lotus, Jennifer Coolidge. Yeah. I'd love to have her on the podcast, either our flagship or this one. Yeah. <laughs> Jennifer. Mm -hmm. Jennifer, but, she's, um, she's listening. Everyone's listening. Um, but that was a very, uh, just, I had not heard a, I had not heard a Jennifer Coolidge impression. <laughs> so, that was All right, let's go to another one. And then I got one for Dana. Okay, let's go. This guy, we okay. don't know who he is, say his name. This is Dante Carter. What's up, guys? My name is Dante Carter. I'm a car. comedian from South Carolina. Uh, I'm going to pause here so David can make fun of me. <laughs> oh, David. Okay, Typical. you're in your car. Your this is my Carter. impression of Barack Obama ordering Taco Bell. <clears throat> uh, can I get a uh, chalupa? Uh, with uh, 
uh, extra pico, uh, sour cream, uh, no beans, uh, berry can't do beans, uh, no beans, berry gets the boo boo belly. Uh, thank you. He gets a boo boo belly. Okay, first of all, Dante, I like that he he made it funny. Like he took mm. that one hook of uh, and took it so far. So it's actually just funny, mm. even if you know didn't know who Obama was. I thought the impression was pretty good. It was um, nice, nice job. I don't. Uh, you, you can make a choice to go down on this this more often. You know, just that type of thing. But he does kind of. Uh, he will do that. He took yeah. it. He you teased it out. Seen Obama David. with that vocal fry thing. Mm hmm. Yeah, that was fun. that's that's what people do. That's what people do. Um, but yeah, it's, it, it's not, not a lot of people do a Barack Obama. I like that. He took time Would to go into the car and, set, and knock it out instead of just doing it in his house. He's like, I'll just do it now. Who gives a I thought he was going to do Theo Vaughn with that accent. Yeah, I'm, I bet I'm someone does. South. Do Theo. Here I go. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Here we are. All right. This is okay, Nathan. We got Beasley. another one. Then I got one after Nathan. Nathan. Okay. Well, okay. hi, Dana. Hi, David. This is Morgan Freeman. Uh, little Birdie told me that you're now taking an impressions for your podcast. I think that's a mighty fine idea. I also understand that you're accepting red rednecky jokes as well. well. I thought, why not kill two birds with one stone? <laughs> oh, he's doing one. Or as okay. Red might say, okay. two squirrels with one can. So, here we go. I'm Red Rednecky, a redneck comedian. Last week, my girlfriend broke up with me, but told me we could still be cousins. Come and get some. <laughs> well, this is Nathan from Dallas, okay. Texas. I just want to say thank you guys so much for the decades of laughter you guys have given us and me personally. It's been a thrill. Love the podcast. Keep up the great work. I like that part the well, best. I like the ending part about the great work <laughs> yeah nathan beasley um it was a really really good uh morgan freeman it was very subtle and very real um and the red red necky was actually pretty uh clever maybe maybe too clever i don't know but it was actually a good um div diversion joke like it they were cousins all the whole time right yeah yeah, <laughs> I like that red red necky one too and i like it as mm -hmm. morgan freeman i was trying yeah. to look i was looking away because I just want to hear if it just sounds like his tone, but he has rhythms down as yeah. Morgan Freeman. White guy is hard. It must be harder to do it, but it's pretty good. I thought it was good. Mm -hmm. Okay. Is there one yeah. more? I just have some Reverend Necky jokes. Oh, well, let me oh. do my impression. Let's do the impression. Yeah. Here it is, Dana. So this is, uh, this is in the shower this morning. I thought of this because I watched the beekeeper this weekend with Jason Statham and any cool. movie he's in, He's always, first of all, he doesn't talk a lot. He always has a lot on his mind. All these guys have a lot on their mind. They don't want to be bothered. And he's always thinking like this when other people are talking. And, and, he, and, and they like to be left alone. And he's like, I'm the beekeeper. <laughs> I keep the bees. I like to be left alone. And if you come at me, I might sting you if you cross me. And they're like, well, are you a bee or are you a beekeeper? And he's like, don't let that concern you. You don't want to find out. I take the honey <laughs> to the queen. And they're like, well, I don't get what your job is. You're, you're actually a beekeeper or are you just, are you here to kill me? <laughs> just, I'll go, I just want to be left alone. All of them want to be left alone. All those type of guys. He was also in Meg. I saw two movies of the Meg, the shark movie, where it's a diabolical shark, oh, yeah. where it gets so bananas. Oh, yeah. You know, it's, you know, it's not um, a well-written movie when at the end he goes, careful, the shark has a gun. The shark does? <laughs> it's getting very human at, toward the end. It's, it's got a gun in his right fin. <laughs> it's actually a good impression. It's good. The, uh, you know, if you don't exactly. try too hard, it's a decent impression because he doesn't really do a lot. He's just thinking a lot. And he was a beekeeper, well, yeah, now a full I'll... beekeeper outfit. That was the movie. I'm a beekeeper. It's I'm also a beekeeper. just a funny take on a uh, kind of a 
badass guy in a movie where he's talking in metaphors or something. Yeah, I'm the, the way beekeeper, he... and you're, you know, it's just a funny character anyway. Which is then, the and he goes, is it's Jason Grayson. After I sting you, I die. And they're like, wait, we die or you die? And also, so you're actually a bee in this scenario? And he's like, Hang on. <laughs> no, wait, go back one. I'm, yes, I'm the beekeeper. We, 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 everyone, we understood that part, that part we got, but that's really most of his lines in the movie. Cause it turns out a beekeeper, other than he tends to actual bees in the movie, all this, then if you're a super badass FBI guy, you're a beekeeper. They don't really say what that means. That means that's just the best, the best. Oh, it actually a thing, a thing. I'm a beekeeper. I'm a but beekeeper. But then he goes, leaves and is, and he hides and retires, but. He kind of likes the attention because he's actually a beekeeper. So they're like, wait, you're not a the beekeeper from the FBI. He's like, why would you think that? Well, you're dressed like a beekeeper. You could do anything else. <laughs> Work at a bowling alley. I don't I'm know. I'm a beekeeper. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I keep bees. Uh-huh. I keep bees in a keeping place. Yeah. A keeping it's, place? What do you mean? Where bees live. I'm, you don't know that much about being a beekeeper because you already don't know really where you keep them. <laughs> <laughs> he just likes the I want to just be keeper. that guy I'm just going to call for a uh, restaurant We'd like a reservation We'd like four seats And I know how to get them Okay, Even what's the name? The beekeeper oh, oh. And I'd like a plate okay. of fresh bees Fried bees <laughs> I don't know where you're This is Tower Bar We don't have uh <laughs> okay, well, we can find something. We have honey packets. We'll find something for you. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I like honey packets. Yeah, that'll be fun. Mm. Beekeeper. All right, All right our right, final let's get thing into... today is yeah. <laughs> red Red Necky. Mm-hmm. Red Red Necky. We're going to watch a few of these. Oh, I guess we'll read oh, them. You're going to okay, read here's... them. And if you can read those, Dana, I already see it's almost too long, but go ahead. I can read them. Yeah, well, this is, uh, this is from Spence Camp. Thanks for submitting. Here and I always start. I'm red, red necky, the red neck comedian. I'm reading this cold. Preacher told me folks is talking because I'm married to a minor. I said, Hell, she come down with the black lung when she was eight. She ain't set foot in a mine in three years. Come on, get home. <laughs> oh, a minor. Uh, that okay. one will want to trunk down a little bit, but I get the, the joke. I didn't even joke get it. it. I had mm-hmm. to read it twice. Yeah. But it's, okay. It's Here's Philip Hirsch. <clears throat> Let's see. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm Red Red Necky, the redneck comedian. When I kiss mama, she said I kiss like papa. I told her that's what sister said. Come and get some. <laughs> well, as an incestual thing, that's not yeah. bad. It's pretty tight. Sounds like a yeah, porn yeah. I just watched. Okay. <laughs> Come and get some. Can go either way. <laughs> J Dubs is the name for our next submittal. I'm Red Red Necky, the redneck comedian. Last night, there was a knock on my door. I said, who that? They said, yo, mama. I said, which one? Come on, get some. Well, he's got two moms. What, why was it which one? He has two moms? <laughs> I don't get it. Okay. <laughs> Actually, they're Not funny. I like I don't these. Get it. Yeah, Keep them funny. coming. Here's two. To show you how hard it is, here's two quick ones that I yeah. wrote. Mom, this is red. <laughs> this is red, red necky, the redneck mm-hmm. comedian. My mama wrote a cookbook: How to Eat Like a Swamp Rat. Come and get some. <laughs> how to eat like a swamp? <laughs> okay, so you so, eat like well, the, the swamp long rat one. <laughs> well, ahead. this it should. I should have started this one. That's too long. I'm red, red necky, the redneck comedian. I asked my mama what's for dinner. She said hot sizzling mud bugs topped with a dozen live crawdads and smothered in swamp sauce. Come and get some. You Too long. Say, what, you should say, what I, is it, my birthday? Come and get some. <laughs> <laughs> well, the whole thing is come and get some, and you can <laughs> elongate that. Okay. My dentist, I'm red, red necky, redneck comedian. My dentist told me my teeth were green and brown. I said, great, just like my daddy. Come and get some. <laughs> They're hard. The, They're hard. Today, the, the <laughs> submittals were better than the... They all get yeah. laughs because it just uh, everything about it sounds funny. I know, but how do I top the language of this one? I met my sister only because mama took me down. Come on, get some. Yeah, you know, that's quick. like dun, 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 yep. dun, dun. 
It's hard. Hard to do the short ones. Quick. But um, incest funny. You guys are getting close. We haven't crowned a red red necky champ yet, nope. but uh, you guys Keep are trying. getting close. Mm-hmm. And uh, send some more impressions. And uh, I guess we'll see you next week. Is that all we got or not? Here to sign us off today is Jason Strazel. <laughs> you thought we were gone, but I've always been here. I don't know if you read the papers, but I'm the beekeeper. Don't cross me. You get I'm honey in your grill. <laughs> You'll, I'll spray you with honey in your grill. It sounds sexual. No. <laughs> Let me I think of a new way. Anyway, bye for now. This has been a presentation of Odyssey. Superfly is executive produced by Dana Carvey and David Spade. Charlie Finan of Brillstein Entertainment. Jenna Weiss-Berman of Odyssey. Heather Santoro and Greg Holtzman. Hope you liked it. Mm-hmm.